the Upanishads are the most recent additions to the central scriptures of ancient Indian religious tradition, the Vedas. They represent a period of transition from the archaic ritualism of the early Vedas to a focus on philosophy and spirituality, which would form the foundation of future schools, such as Vedanta, which literally means end of the Vedas. The Upanishads therefore reflect a development in understanding, and these developments would later be interpreted in different ways by different Indian philosophers, giving rise to various schools of thought, including Madhvacharya's Dvaita, Ramanuja's Vishishtadvaita, and Adi Shankara's Advaita. The distinctions between interpretations are based on the degree of reality that is granted to the world. In this video, we present an abridgment of Robert Ernest Hume's overview of the development of the philosophy of the Upanishads. Hume's translation of the Thirteen Principal Upanishads is considered the standard for the work. I hope you enjoy. Chapter 1 The Place of the Upanishads in the History of Philosophy In the 6th century BC, alongside global philosophical developments, a significant movement emerged in India. Early Indian thinkers, like the Greek philosophers, embraced diverse explanations for the nature of the world. They also discerned a single unifying principle, and this intuition led to the development of a pantheistic system, which is a foundational tenet in Indian philosophy. The Upanishads mark the earliest attempts to construct a rational understanding of experience, serving as authoritative statements, guiding subsequent philosophical formulations. Even dissenting schools, like the materialistic Kavakas and the dualistic Sankhya philosophers, acknowledge the Upanishad's significance. Today, these texts remain pivotal in Indian philosophical thought, and they continue to shape contemporary Hinduism. Beyond India, the Upanishads attract global interest, and the Upanishads' pantheism continues to impact Western thought. Following is an organised outline of their salient ideas, presented for those seeking a philosophic understanding. Chapter 2 The Upanishads and Their Place in Indian Philosophy The Upanishads, integral to the early Indian Vedas, transcend rites and mantras into philosophical discourse. Dating is challenging, but is roughly estimated to around 600 to 500 BC. Buddhist influences are also evident in shared doctrines and linguistic connections. The heterogeneous nature of the Upanishads suggests varied influences and structural complexities, as seen in compositions like the Brihad Aranyaka. Notably, the Upanishads incorporate dualistic Sankhya philosophy, often opposing the monistic Vedanta. On the other hand, the Svetashvatara explicitly mentions Sankhya and criticises its theories. The Upanishads therefore reflect a period of system recognition and antagonism, suggesting compilation from various sources rather than a cohesive philosophic theory. Chapter 3 First Attempts at the Conception of a Unitary World Ground both the early Indian and Greek philosophies explored the origins of the world, particularly its original substance and structure. In the Vedas, particularly the creation hymn, cosmogonic speculation emerged, and by the time of the Upanishads, this theme persisted. The early Upanishads retained cosmogonic theories, including the notion of water as the primal entity, mirroring Thales' proposition among the Greeks. Other Upanishads integrated philosophic elements, attributing the world's origin to Atman. Space and non-being were also posited as ultimate grounds, and the Shandogya Upanishad combined the non-being theory with the idea of the cosmic egg. However, it later challenged the idea that being comes from non-being, asserting that the world is self-procreated from being itself. The sage Yadnyavalkya, from the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, 
described space as woven across the past, present, and future, and attributed its essence to the imperishable. This imperishable is beyond earthly distinctions, and governs time and natural phenomena. The search for the world's origin thus progressed from the phenomenal, such as water or space, to the super-phenomenal, such as non-being, being, or the imperishable. Various entities are proposed as the world ground, but the Upanishads settle on the concept of Brahma as the central and foundational element, thus leading to the philosophy known as Brahmaism. Chapter 4 the development of the conception of Brahma. The Upanishads thus introduce Brahma as the primal entity, stating, Verily, in the beginning, this world was Brahma. Initially meaning him, or sacred knowledge, Brahma evolves to denote the power inherent in the world and the world ground. However, the transition from religious to philosophical ideas faced challenges, Legends, like the one in the Kena Upanishad, depict the gods as unable to comprehend Brahma's identity, highlighting its mysterious nature. Yajnavalkya reduced all the gods to Brahma, emphasizing the singular divine essence. Understanding Brahma proves challenging for ordinary individuals, making its true nature elusive. Gargya Balaki, in dialogue with King Ajatasatru, proposes multiple definitions of Brahma, each of which is challenged and expanded. Ultimately, Brahma is portrayed as the source of existence, encompassing all things. This marks a significant shift from earlier cosmologies, emphasizing Brahma as a singular, unitary essence. The most pivotal dialogue involves Ajatashatru instructing Gargya, the conversation transcends individual entities as the world ground, introducing Brahma as the soul and the upholder of psychical existence during sleep. This revelation signifies a substantial advancement in understanding the world ground, laying the groundwork for subsequent Upanishadic dialogues. Two discernible stages are evident. First, the move towards a universal world ground that assimilates all phenomena, identifying everything with Brahma, and second, the recognition that this world ground is, in some sense, a soul connected with the finite ego. The evolution of these tendencies forms the foundation for the ongoing development of the conception of Brahma. As the concept of Brahma evolved from its early cosmogonies, it shifted towards pervading all and being all, Unlike the earlier notion of the world as an emanation or construct of Brahma, the developed conception asserts that the whole world is Brahma. This marks a clear embrace of pantheism, explicitly stating that Brahma is everything. However, the Upanishads acknowledge another crucial factor, the existence of the soul, or Atman, which poses a more intricate challenge. This introduces the second stage, where Brahma is perceived as a soul correlated with the finite ego. Chapter 5 The Development of the Conception of the Atman and its Union with Brahma The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad explores Brahma's essence in both the self and not-self, extending beyond cosmical phenomena to human functions. This evolution likely stems from the primitive, anthropomorphic idea of the world ground as an immense human figure, as seen in the hymn of the cosmic person. The notion is further detailed in the Atharva Veda, which emphasizes the correspondence between cosmic and individual functions. The concept evolves as the text hints at the idea that the individual self, Atman, holds a universal nature akin to the nature of Brahma. This marks a philosophical advance, culminating in the declaration that the self is the trace of the all. So, attempts were made to conceive of Atman similarly to Brahma. An early theory in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad talks of Atman's wish for a companion and subsequent self-bifurcation, producing a female principle. In the Shandogya dialogue, 
Ashvapati refutes any partial truths about Atman, claiming it is best understood as within oneself. This marks another pivotal development, and a shift from figurative to more universalized philosophical thinking. As Atman is recognized as the world ground, relations between the not-self and the self gain significance. The concept evolves to a unity of identities, wherein the universal Atman is immanent in both subjective and objective realms. Atman is the basis of unity between the self and the not-self in various aspects of existence. Yadnyavalkya explicates that the soul, Atman, in all things corresponds to one's breath. Previously, Brahma was perceived as the single world ground, emphasizing the objective. However, recognizing the importance of the self's existence, a shift towards a more spiritual Atman was made, linking the cosmic person to a unifying Atman. Knowledge of this unified Brahma Atman thus became the ultimate pursuit and the key to understanding the universe. The central revelation, repeatedly conveyed by Udalaka to Svetaketu, is the profound declaration, That art thou. Chapter 6 The Realistic Conception of the Ultimate Unity and the Doctrine of Illusion In the Shandogya, Brahma is depicted as the essence of the entire world, while also possessing attributes such as mind, life, light, truth, and space. Contradictions are inherent in its nature. It is both smaller than a grain, yet greater than the universe. It moves yet remains still, is far yet near, within all and outside of all. Further verses elaborate on the diverse identities of this pantheistic being, as attempts to explain its nature result in a conglomerate concept that contradicts the fundamental unity symbolized by Brahma. The Upanishads grapple with this diversity within the world ground. In the Taittiriya Upanishad, Brahma embodies both the defined and undefined, conscious and unconscious, real and false. The distinction between the phenomenal and noumenal emerges, explaining the conflict between the one and the many. Two forms of Brahma are thus distinguished, the formed, mortal and actual, and the formless, immortal and noumenal. The former is associated with natural elements of sensibility, while the latter defies sensory representation. The Maitrayaniya Upanishad introduces the concepts of time and the timeless, both of which are considered real, but in different ways. This would form the basis for two knowledges. But again, this dualism contradicts the Upanishadic axiom of the singular Brahma, and so the notion of phenomenality is introduced, which asserts that diversity is merely appearance. The formed is unreal, the formless is real. This leads to the concept of Maya, or cosmic illusion. Maya originated in the Rig Veda and signifies the illusory projection of the world from Brahma. The speculative outcome of this conflict is the rejection of the sensed world in favor of an undifferenced unity. The real Brahma is an indemonstrable, enduring being beyond sensory qualities and limitations. The higher Brahma is devoid of qualities and defies description, aligning with the ultimate negation, a conclusion that is akin to Spinoza's pantheism. And thus, the great Atman and Brahma, while initially identified, eventually disintegrate into the illusory and the unknowable. Chapter 7 Idealism and the Conception of Pure Unity The Upanishadic thinkers, realizing the limitations of their realist approach, shifted to epistemological idealism. The unity sought outside the self proved elusive, and this led to a profound revelation. The true unity lies within the self. The self, previously perceived as separate from the world, is now recognized as the ultimate reality. The world is a construct of the self's consciousness, 
as evidenced in dreams. This idealistic metaphysic contends that diversity is a thought product of the larger, real self. The source of illusion is not an external magician, but the persistent belief in the separation of self and world from the undifferentiated unity of the self. Knowledge of the truth dispels this illusion, restoring the identity temporarily obscured by ignorance. Recognizing I am Brahma leads to a profound assimilation into the essence of Brahma. So, the Upanishadic quest for unity centers on union with the inner, unitary self, whether referred to as Atman or Brahma. The ideal is complete, unqualified unity, with the waking consciousness viewed as a troubled dream. While Prajapati initially describes the blissful self in the state of dreaming, dissatisfaction with this idea prompts a shift to dreamless sleep. Yet, even this state fails to satisfy, as it lacks self-awareness. Yanyavalkya offers a more philosophical explanation, emphasizing that consciousness in a state of pure unity is impossible. Knowledge is dualistic, requiring an object, and in the unity of the real self, this dual nature disappears. Nevertheless, the conception of a blissful union with the self remains a central theme, the blissful state is portrayed as a plenum where limitations of the not-self are absent. However, the concept of bliss is depicted differently in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, which suggests a sensual experience within the embrace of the intelligent soul. However, the true conception leans towards dreamless sleep, where the duality of subject and object dissolves. The Upanishads grapple with articulating an experience they assert as inconceivable, resorting to analogies and paradoxes to convey the nature of this elusive state. Beyond the waking consciousness, and even the profound sleep state, a fourth stage is introduced in the Mandukya, named Turiya, which emphasizes unity with the self. The attainment of this unity occurs not only in sleep, but also in death. Death is therefore described as absorption into the real, and represents the liberation from the illusion of a separate self. The ultimate unity, devoid of limitations, is unconscious, as observed in dreamless sleep and death, and is characterized by the absence of subject-object distinctions. Chapter 8. The Outcome on Religion and on the Doctrine of Karma in the Vedic period, rituals were central for divine appeasement and salvation. However, a shift occurred in the Brahmanic era, transforming gods into dependents, sustained by human sacrifices. And then the Upanishads introduced a monistic philosophy, revealing the gods as fraudulent conceptions. The Kenna's concluding paragraph introduces a radical shift in religious and ethical standards. Knowledge, not worship or sacrifice, is the key to salvation. Metaphysical understanding unveils the pantheistic unity of self and world in Brahma or Atman, and rituals are seen as futile without this knowledge. The doctrine of karma, which is central to contemporary Indian practical religion, suggests that one's actions determine their next life, possibly in a higher or lower animal body. While the Rig Veda lacks traces of metempsychosis, the Upanishads reveal it as a revelation. Here, metempsychosis is a retributive aspect of character, shaping one's next life. Pleasant conduct may lead to a higher birth, while wicked conduct might result in a lower animal form. Knowledge, not just action, influences this position in the next life, and the escape from karma and rebirth. Chapter 9. The Outcome on Practical Life and on Morals The idea that knowledge is the central pursuit paralleled the thought of the Greeks, challenging established ethics, and favouring knowledge over religion and morality. 
the Upanishads emphasize the practical and theoretical significance of knowledge, portraying it as the ultimate means to achieve one's desires. The recurring phrase, he who knows this, underscores the invulnerability and omnipotence attributed to those possessing this mystical knowledge. Beyond its practical and speculative value, knowledge in the Upanishads is seen as ethically transformative, freeing the knower from the consequences of past misdeeds, and allowing them to continue seemingly immoral actions without repercussions. This ethical perspective differs from the Socratic view that knowledge should lead to virtuous behaviour. Instead, Upanishadic knowledge acts as a unique absolver of sins. Nevertheless, the emphasis on knowledge led to a shift from unbridled licentiousness to an acknowledgement of the importance of good conduct alongside knowledge. While the early Upanishads suggested that knowledge exempted one from evil, the later texts clarified that understanding, mindfulness, and purity were essential for reaching spiritual goals. The consistent pantheistic perspective held that, with complete knowledge, moral concepts become irrelevant, and the true knower enters a realm beyond empirical realities. The great Atman transcends ethical distinctions, and the Atman-knower mirrors this transcendence. The illusion of an external world and soul solidifies the Upanishadic stance that all activity, including good and evil deeds, is ultimately illusory. Sleep is thus considered the closest thing to real existence. Chapter 10. The Artificial Method of Unity in Yoga The Upanishads seek absolute unity with the Atman, which is theoretically achievable through metaphysical knowledge. Desires are deemed as hindrances, and must therefore be relinquished. But despite this theoretical ideal, desires persist in daily life, necessitating the practical solution of yoga. Yoga involves using breath restraint, sensory withdrawal, and meditation as a means to unite with the blissful self. Chapter 11 Concluding Estimates The Upanishads reflect a complex evolution of thought, from an early, realistic materialism to a more speculative idealism. The earnest search for truth led to this progression over the course of several centuries. The chronological order is challenging to establish, due to heterogeneity and contradictions in the material. The Upanishads identify the psychic self with Brahma, evolving into a form of pantheism, although different from the Western kind. The Upanishads express an eagerness for ultimate unity and spirituality, which is encapsulated in its central quest. From the unreal, lead me to the real. From darkness, lead me to light. From death, lead me to immortality. And that brings us to the end of An Outline of the Philosophy of the Upanishads. We shall soon begin with Hume's translations of the thirteen principal Upanishads, so be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on. If you'd like to support the survival of this channel and further abridgments of spiritual and philosophical texts, please consider visiting one of the links in the description. All help will be sincerely appreciated. Thank you for listening.